Today I want to look at the track The World Is As Soft As Lace by the band Felt. Now Felt are a band that I'm not particularly knowledgeable about. I know of Felt, I think I know a handful of their songs, but this particular song kept cropping up. I kept hearing people mention it. I think a number of people have requested that I look at this song, so I thought I'd check it out. And sure enough, it's a great song that contains some amazing guitar playing. So of course I had to sit down and try and learn it. And it's been quite an interesting process. It's been quite challenging because as you will hear, it's quite a complex piece of work, but it's been lots of fun trying to do that. So let me start by playing through a bit of the track for you. Then I'll tell you a bit more about Felt and then we'll break the track down in glorious nerdy detail. There we go, this is such a good track and I don't quite know why it's taken me so long to learn one of their songs. Now Felt, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the band, were a British band active in the 80s and according to Wikipedia they are a jangle pop band, whatever that means, it's not a term that I've ever used, but they're kind of moody, melodic indie pop and their first few albums at least feature the amazing guitar playing of someone called Morris Debank and this track is quite representative of his style I think he does these kind of meandering melodic kind of filigree guitar parts and uh, when I first started listening to Felt it sort of struck me that they were quite similar to Tom Verlaine and Richard Lloyd from television and sure enough just reading up yesterday apparently the band name Felt was inspired by a television lyric so there's definitely that connection and influence there and also just reading on Wikipedia, I don't know how much truth there is in this. Apparently Morris D. Bank and Felt were quite a big influence on Johnny Marr and his guitar playing style. Anyway, let's take a look at this one. And it is a really complex track. There's lots going on. So I'm not going to explain every single note here, but I'm going to try and go into an adequate amount of detail for those of you who want to learn this one properly. There will be a transcription and a tab available on my Patreon page for those of you who really want to get into the nerdy details but um, it's quite a big undertaking to learn this one note for note all the way through so I'm not expecting many of you will do that but there might well be just bits of this that you can learn and use as interesting musical and technical exercises or you might just want to take some of the ideas from this track and make them your own and use them in songs and guitar parts of your own so let's take a look we're in the key of D the jangliest of all keys I think and harmonically speaking this one is quite straightforward there is an acoustic guitar part and for the most part that's just strumming the three basic chords of the tune. We've just got D chord, sometimes some D sus4 in there, then there's E minor and there's a G as well. So D is 
clearly the one chord. We've got E minor, which is the two chord, the two minor chord. And we've also got G, which is the four chord. That's the basic harmonic backdrop for this song. But what I want to focus on is the lead guitar part, which is considerably more elaborate and millions of notes flying around here. So I'm just going to try and describe this as best I can. As I say, check out the tab if you want a bit more detail than I'm able to give you in the explanation section of this video. The introduction is really beautiful. It goes like this. So all of this played over a D or a D sus4 kind of a sound. And what Morris Debank is doing, he's really playing around the D chord shapes and just embellishing and adding in some extra notes. So you might like to think in terms of your D caged shapes here. That's what I'm thinking really when I'm playing this. So you've got your D bar chord shape at the 10th fret, then you've got your D form shape and your triad shape up here in the next position. And sometimes he's coming down to the, to the G form. Later on in the track, I think he's coming down to this form of the D chord as well. So all of these little licks and riffs you can think of as kind of hiding out around those caged shapes. Now the first part of this introduction is just played in the 10th position, just a, a D jumping up an octave. Then we're sliding up the high E string into this position here. So sliding up to the G which is the is the fourth to give you give you that sus4 sound. Uh, got a little hammer on and pull off there. Um, then we're back to the 10th position. And all of this just embellishing our D chord shape. So in a kind of a, a solely or Hendrix kind of way, really. And next we've got this. Now, I kind of debated exactly how I was going to lay this out on the fretboard. I think these are the correct notes, but with this section of the intro, with a lot of parts of this song actually, you've got some options as to where you play some of these notes. You might be able to play the same thing on a different string at a different fret and still get the correct notes. So uh, really I've just gone with what feels comfortable to me, what flows and what sounds right. As far as I know, there's no video footage of D-Bank playing this tune, so I can't be 100% sure in some instances where this stuff is played, but this is kind of my best guess. If you're really serious about learning this, then I suggest you check out how I'm doing it. But you might want to experiment with some alternative fingerings here and there. Find what feels right and what works best for you. In terms of the actual notes, we've got this. And there's an open string definitely in there. I can hear an open D in there. So it's just a question of where you want to lay that out on the fretboard. And there, there are a few options. So keeping it all in position. That's okay, it feels a bit awkward to me because you've got this kind of series of fourths all on the same fret, which I struggle to play at the kind of speed that, that D-Bank plays it. So you could um, kind of dip out of position just for that A note there and the open string, and then go back into position. So um, that works. But what I actually chose to do is to go Play those three notes here, then change position. And play the next few notes down here. It's just a bit easier to play those fourths down there for me. Then you've got the open string, which buys you a bit of time to get back into position for the last few notes of this phrase. So that's how I've decided to do it. Um, play around with that. Um, you feel free to change notes if it feels better, if it works better for you. Then the introduction continues with some quite simple melodic stuff. Another quite speedy phrase here. So we've got a A to B hammer on, then D, A, coming over onto the A string for a G, G and then F sharp. 
started up there along the third string. And then this phrase again. That little uh, F sharp to G, hammer on and pull off. And then we got this idea. So you could see that, I suppose, as D major pentatonic. Um, then we got some quite simple chords. So. We're going from a, a D chord here and then just moving your first finger over to the fourth string and you've got this sound. So you've got second fret, open third string, third fret on the second string and second fret on the top string. And just going between those two chords. Arpeggiating them. It reminds me there's a great REM song called find the river, which I think is the same cause as this. A really beautiful song. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to learn that R.E.M. were felt fans and that they've been influenced by this record. Um, and then this section continues. It's the same chord shapes there, just playing the second, third and fourth strings now. that takes us into the verse. Now the verse is played over a pair of chords. The acoustic part is just strumming a D to an E minor, so. And over the top of that, D bank is playing lots of these quite elaborate single note lines, all based on notes from the key, so D major scale or D major pentatonic scale. And over the D chord, it's more or less a fixed part. And then over the E minor chord, it seems to be uh, more of just a random or improvised series of, of licks uh, and fills. So the, the fixed part of this goes like this. We've got... So this is over the D chord, it's D major pentatonic really. I'm just playing it at the fourth and seventh frets on the, the middle pair of strings. And then we've got a little fill there, again, D major pentatonic. And then over the E minor chord, Just notes from the D major scale, lots of stuff just sliding up and down the length of one or two strings. So starting on the, the G here and sliding down, crossing over onto the third string, and then back up again. Return to the D chord, it's the same kind of lick. And then over the E minor we've got a different kind of a fill. So. here in the 10th position to start with and then sliding down on the the B string over onto the third string and back up and more D major pentatonic stuff and then another little fill Something like that. It's more stuff just taken from the D major scale. So coming down on the third string over onto the D. So. And then more of this D stuff. A little embellishment there the F sharp, hammering onto the G and then back again. And then a final little fill. So this time going up higher, up to this high E then sliding down once again. And 
that then takes us into the chorus. But before we go there, let me just put all of that verse section together for you. the chorus once again you've got some options as to where you lay this stuff out on the fretboard I've just gone with what flows and what seems logical to me and what sounds right but you might want to experiment with some of these fingerings and come up with some alternatives so what's going on here we're playing over a G to D to E minor kind of a chord progression so something like this So one bar G, one bar D, two bars of E minor. And D bank seems to be focusing on the chord tone. So triad shapes of each of those chords and then embellishing those shapes slightly. He particularly seems to like fours and that kind of sus four sound. We've got some ninths and things in there as well. I'm starting with this. So this is played over the G chord and I've got this shape here. So five on the D and eight on the B and an open G string as well. And then I'm jumping to this shape here. So we've got a D, an A, and then a high D. So I kind of debated for quite a while exactly how I was going to do this, but this seems to work best for me. And then we've got a B and a G. All of this is outlining that G chord sound. Then we're going to D, and D back just seems to be playing out of this D chord shape. So really just arpeggiating that, adding in that sus4 sound. And then we're going to E minor. That's a really nice ascending melody. So we've got. that kind of melody and uh, we've got some open strings in there as well in particular the open high E string I think there's some open B in there too and we've got this kind of idea so those first pair of notes there they might be double stops I think so then over onto the top two strings This is all over the E minor chord, and we've got some stuff which you could see as coming from the E minor pentatonic scale. Then we're back to the G chord again, it's a similar kind of idea, just with an extra embellishment there. More D stuff. And then another kind of ascending riff, which is slightly different from the first time around. So I'm hearing it as this. So the notes are these, the basic notes. So E, A, F sharp, and B. Open strings in there. Maybe some double stops for those lower notes as well. And then we've got this. So coming down in third, see this is a bit classical sounding. A lot of people say that Morris D. Bank has got a classical kind of influence in his playing. Apparently he was classically trained or whatever that means but uh, yeah this this certainly uh, it's got that kind of classical thirds sequence sound to it so 
more pull-offs here, so a bit of a stretch here. Then back to our G riff. And more D stuff. Before finally resolving to this E note here. Then at the end of the chorus, we've just got this slightly twangy riff tagged on the end. It's all played on the lower strings and it's outlining that E minor kind of sound. It's all, I think, based on the E minor pentatonic scale. So. so that's played around the second position. Then I'm coming up to the ninth position and playing some similar kind of ideas. And there's a final little melodic idea which all of the band plays together, the bass and the other guitar. If I put all of that together for you it sounds a bit like this. Then we're into another verse, another chorus, there's an outro section as well, but it's all based on very similar material. There are some slight variations you can hear if you listen very closely, but essentially it's just a repeat of what we've already had. I will be tabbing all of this stuff out in detail with some of those variations for those of you who are super interested in all of that stuff, but I say essentially it's just a repeat of the stuff that I've just shown you. As far as gear goes, I don't know what Morris Debank would have used on the original recording for this. And I don't really know what he would have used live either. I did find a couple of quite poor quality live videos, not of him playing this track, but playing uh, a couple of other tracks. And in those videos, he seemed to be using some kind of Strat type guitar. I don't think it was a Strat. It might have even had humbuckers. But today I found myself drawn to playing this one on my Strat. I thought it sounded pretty good. And really you just want a nice clean sound probably with some reverb, maybe a bit of delay on it, and that should get you into the right kind of area. So today, so I'm using my Strat. This is a 60s reissue Strat. The amp I'm using is my Fender Princeton, and I'm piling on a few effects. And I've got some compression coming from a Kali 76. That's made by Origin Effects. And I do often use a bit of compression on essentially clean sounds. It just seems to bring a bit of warmth and fullness to what otherwise could be quite a sterile sound and then I've got a bit of delay coming from the MXR carbon copy. Reverb I think is a big part of this sound so I've got some reverb coming from my Strymon Blue Sky. I'll probably add some extra reverb as well in the computer when I mix this video down and I've got a chorus in there as well. I didn't actually use the chorus. I thought there might be some chorus on the original but tried the chorus and it wasn't really happening so I left that switched off. So there we go. hope you found this one interesting. I certainly found this one an interesting video to make and it's always fun for me to explore new music and to push myself as a guitar player. So I hope a few of you have fun learning this one as well. As I said, if you'd like the tab, that's going to be up on my Patreon page. I've done a note for note tab of the entire track and my backing track is also going to be up there. You can pay what you like and get access to that stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.